The FBI says its election command center is staffed 24-7 to deal with any election-related security issues that pop up in the coming days. The purpose of the command post is to ensure the FBI is well positioned to respond to threats that would come in or information that would come in that would affect our election security. Those threats include criminal threats, such as threats to election workers, foreign malign influence, cyber threats, and acts of domestic violence. For more on what we should know about possible threats to the election, I am now joined by Sam Vinograd and Andrew Boyd. Sam is a CBS News national security contributor and a former assistant secretary for counterterrorism in the Department of Homeland Security. Andrew is a CBS News contributor and former director of the CIA's Center for Cyber Intelligence. Thank you, for both of you, for being here. Sam, can you give us the landscape of any physical threats to Election Day that the intelligence community is monitoring for or warning may happen? Well, there are a range of potential sources of physical threats, Lindsay. We have terrorism-related threats that could materialize. There was an individual arrested just a few weeks ago for, for plotting a terrorist attack on Election Day. That was uh, an individual affiliated with the foreign terrorist organization. At the same time, we have the risk of threats from domestic violent extremists motivated by an animus towards a particular candidate or just general anti-government sentiment. Those physical security threats can materialize in the form of acts of sabotage against election infrastructure, threats against individuals, and or um, other forms of voter intimidation. At the same time, we also have potential criminal threats that are not terrorist-related in nature. Further, we have various nation-states like Russia, China, and Iran who are actively trying to stoke divisions in the United States, understanding that that could lead to actual threats of physical violence. And that is why the federal government has invested an unprecedented amount of resources to share best practices with their state and local partners who are in the lead in communities to conduct physical security assessments, do tabletop exercises and more to really encourage law enforcement officials all around the country to be as prepared as possible for any form of physical violence on election day and all the way through the inauguration. Andrew, what are the biggest cyber threats this election? So, as Jen Easterly, the head of DHS has, has said, we have secure elections across all, all 50 states. The gravest cyber threat, I, I believe, is uh, China, Russia, Iran, principally Russia, uh, using cyber means to continue to sow disinformation, as we experienced today and was discussed earlier in your show. Um, hijacking websites on CBS, CNN, uh, other uh, news sources to prevent uh, to to disseminate disinformation. But I do think we've done a great job, uh, both in the go government and in the media, debunking these disinformation campaigns. But as far as actual cyber threats, ransomware attacks, I think there's a minimal threat on that. But the disinformation attacks will continue past the election day, and we do have to continue to be vigilant to defend against uh, sowing of disinformation by Russia, China, Iran, and some domestic actors as well. We hear a lot, Andrew, about warnings of disinformation campaigns and foreign influence, but do we know if these influence campaigns really work? So, the measures of effectiveness would argue that they, they don't, but it's just the sowing of disinformation and the discord and amplifying uh, conflicts that we may have uh, over ideas uh, in this country. So, Amer Americans should, should if, if it looks suspicious, 99 percent of the time it is going to be uh, disinformation, but it's really amplifying. Um, there, it's not actually fake information that's created out of whole cloth. But Americans should continue to be vigilant throughout this election cycle and in the period after the election. Sam, what about after Election Day? We've already seen some storefronts in D.C. boarded up in 2020. There were protests at some of the locations where votes were being counted. You'll recall in Arizona, there were armed protesters outside of a processing center in Maricopa County. How much are post-election protests a concern? Law enforcement officials are very concerned about the potential for violence during what will likely be a period of uncertainty after polls close. That's why they have extensive operational planning for any physical security threats that could materialize. We, of course, has, have First Amendment protected activity in this country, but unauthorized activity that has the potential for violence or is intimidating or threatening will most certainly be met with a swift response by law enforcement. Uh, at the state and local level, and as necessary, if state and locals request it, support from the federal government as well. Sam Vinograd and Andrew Boyd, thank you.